So if you've opened up the Linux Basics for Hackers book and read through the introduction, you realize that this was written back in 2018 and used an older version of Kali Linux. Now you can imagine that massive things have changed since the time of the publication of the book in 2018 and here we are in 2024. And I've had you download for the class the 2024.2 version of Kali Linux and thus things are going to be different. I know some of you have reached out and said, Eric, what do you think about us um, installing the older version as well so we can work through the book verbatim and then have a better understanding of how we might find changes or you know critically think our way through using the current version of Kali. So what I wanted to do in this video is first of all you'll notice that the book used Kali Linux 2018.2 all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go out to Google and we're gonna say download older versions of Kali Linux. And when we, when we do that, we get this URL at the top, old.cali.org. Now I know that this is a legitimate Kali uh, site because it's off of the domain Kali.org and that is the domain for Kali Linux, okay? So I'm gonna come out here, we're looking for 2018 to we're gonna click on 2018.2, and in our case, we're gonna download this first um, installation file, this first ISO, which is the AMD64. So once you download that, which I've already done, we're gonna kick over to, there we go, we'll kick over to our virtual box. We'll do new, okay, and we're gonna give it a name, and I'm gonna name it Kelly. Uh, dash Linux dash uh, 2018 okay dot two so that I know the difference between my version so I'm keeping a similar naming convention always a great practice now for me I have a dedicated SSD drive for virtual machines to increase the performance and that's out at D virtual machines so this is now my default now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and find my ISO image which, which happens to be in my downloads okay and I'll find that ISO image that I need there it is 2018.2 ISO you'll see I downloaded it twice because I'm having to create this video twice thanks to an update in uh, in the software that I use to record. So uh, you can skip the unattended. I'm gonna just briefly skip the unattended installation. That would do a default installation, just like we did with the image, right, that we downloaded for 2024, the virtual box image. So as you can see, by skipping that, I'm able to change the memory, which you can change, change the CPU, I've got 16, I'm gonna take that up to two, I'm gonna say next. I'm gonna change this size here, okay, to 30, just so I have ample room. Um, I don't remember exactly how big the initial installation is, but I wanna make sure I have room to download additional features onto this instance, and I'll say next. Okay, I think the book calls for 20 gigs or 20, 25 gigs. So at this point, I hit finish. Now what I need to do is start up this instance to actually install. This is no different than if I put a USB drive or I'm so old, a you know CD or floppy drive into the computer to install the operating system. Okay, so it's gonna power up our instance here. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll look at this instance. Now, as we first in, uh, start the installation, this is actually pretty small, so I'll zoom it in when I post-produce this video. And we're gonna do graphical installation. So we'll do graphical installation. And for the most part, we're going to just accept the defaults that are given to us. I'm going to pause uh, until we get the next prompt that we need to um, respond to. Well, well, it does look like um, we just need to accept the prompts for your region. So make sure you do that. Make sure you pick the appropriate language you want to use. It'll continue the installation. Again, I'm gonna pause. So this is gonna take a while for you to do. Now here, we need to give our machine a host name. And in my case, I'm gonna give it a different host name, obviously, than VBox. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a host name that is different than the original so I can know the difference between my two Kali Linux if I'm running them on the same network, accessing them remotely, whatever the case may be. So 
I'll go ahead and change this one to Cali-2018.2. Now, if my voice sounds different, it's because this part got all crackly. I'm having an issue with that. So I'm just recording this audio again. So if you notice, I created it as 2018-2. I don't need to give it a domain name. Uh, so that's that. Now, older versions of Kali were, you were given a root access, right? The ultimate account for Linux. So here, we're gonna go ahead and give the username, which is root, we're going to give it the password Tor, which is root in reverse, right? It's lowercase root, lowercase Tor. So we'll do that. We'll just double check it real quick. There we go. I guess I'm getting ahead with the new audio. We'll say continue and it's gonna go ahead and set up the clock. It's gonna continue uh, setting up the operating system, all right? So let's go ahead and look at the next prompt. As soon as that comes up, we're gonna pick our region. I'm in the Pacific time zone. So I'm gonna say continue. It's gonna detect this. Now here, we're gonna just select the defaults, okay? We're gonna use the entire disk, which we wanna do. We're gonna accept uh, you know, this drive here, okay? Again, I should have changed the drive name. I always like to make my drives match my virtual machine name. It's just a good practice. Here we're gonna put everything on one partition. If this was a production, we would have separate partitions for home, for var, all those other uh, things that we needed. Here we're gonna say finish partitioning. Now we do need to change this, so make sure you watch carefully as I hit continue here. We need to change this to yes, so that it will actually partition the drive, do the overwrite, you know, install the operating system, blah, 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 right? So it's gonna create those partitions. It's gonna finally start installing the operating system. Here, we're gonna wanna just use the default, yes, network mirror, we can change that later. We don't need an HTTP proxy. If you do, you definitely wanna put that in uh, and continue. So at this point, it's just continuing. Here, we have to install the Grub bootloader. Now on modern ones, this is done. We need to accept the drive where we're installing the operating system to install the bootloader on, right? So make sure you select this, you'll say continue, and off you go. You know, now in virtual machines, there we go, the installation is complete, we're gonna say continue. And now what we'll do is we'll just boot up the operating system. All right, so at this point, we'll fire up Kali Linux 2018.2. Uh, it'll start up the virtual machine. We're gonna wait for it to increase size and then I'll zoom in here. We're gonna go ahead and log in. Now I realize that I didn't let this video run long enough for you to see the desktop, but be assured, I log in, I get on the desktop. So we're gonna log in just like the Linux Basics for Hackers with the username root, the password is Tor and we are gonna be ready to go. I hope this helps and allows you to follow the book more directly. Take care.